Uh, well, I'm an activist. Uh, I work with a group called the Kuna House, which is a small uh, research and solidarity group. Um, and we try and work in support of movements around the world, not just in Britain, but a lot of our work is in, in um, countries in the South. Um, and we try and uh, work with those, with particular movements, environment, human rights, um, de development sort of movements, and um, give them support and try and create a platform over here for them where we can. But uh, it's a solidarity group. So, Movemento Sintera or Via Capensina get on the phone to you and say... Well, not necessarily get on the phone, because all of these things are done much more through alliances and so on. And sometimes, I mean, we have worked with both those groups over the, over the years. Um, my work tends, has tended to be focused quite a lot on two things. One is um, working with communities that are affected by very large-scale infrastructure projects like dams or pipelines that sort of thing, um, and particularly ones that are funded up either by the British government or through institutions like the World Bank that the British government seems to um, put some money into, and to work with those communities that are affected by those projects, um, help them to oppose the projects if that's what, if that's what they're, they're on about, or um, to hold the companies and the funders to account. So I've done a lot of work on, uh, on that. But out of that work has often come questions uh, that groups like us, which are based in the north, possibly have more access to certain types of information than colleagues in the south, and where they've asked us to look further into things. So, for example, um, and I do quite a lot of work around private equity funds, and hedge funds and financialization more generally and the impacts of those of finance um, because groups that we were working with were finding that hedge funds and, and private equity funds were major investors in a lot of the projects that were um, affecting them. So it's shifted a bit and it's, it's, um, it shifts backwards and forwards but I mean I've you know, been doing it for working that way for about 30 years, and so more than that, actually. So, um, Practical solidarity. Why does research matter? Can you give us some examples of yeah. campaigns where good research you made a big difference, you feel, or perhaps also examples of where inadequate or absent research meant that a winnable battle was lost? Well, I don't think it does matter, per se. It only ever matters if it can help expand political space. Um, and when I do research, I suppose, look, I mean, you can look at a car and you can try and understand the car and how it works and the engine and all those sorts of things. Or you can look at a car and try and understand that if you put sugar in the tank, the car doesn't work any longer. So if you're looking for vulnerabilities, for pressure points, then your research has a slightly different direction to it, and it's slightly more uh, helpful in practical politics than if it's just simply abstract research about uh, unrelated, to, unrelated to a particular campaign or a particular um, problem that the groups and people the ones working with are seeking to address. But a lot of our research comes out of questions that those on the ground are seeking, movements on the ground are seeking, are finding problematic. It may be a company, how do I find out who are the investors in the company? It may be much broader, what are hedge funds? It may be a colleague of mine has worked a lot on carbon trading. You know, groups in the south who were being impacted by the growing sort of carbon markets and offsets and so on, trying to find out about how carbon markets worked, and uh, what were what 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 were the what critiques were of, of of them? So, just pure research. That's not what what we do. This is very action oriented, um, trying to find vulnerabilities, trying to find pressure points, and so on. 
And without boasting, because of course, as you've just said, research on its own doesn't matter, but are there, are there examples that you can give of either the Corner House or other research organisations where you feel that really helped build the credibility of the opposition to a dam or carbon offsets? Because of course, this is it one of the help and it can, I mean, I think once, you know, research that, um, research that isn't or doesn't try to be rooted in the needs of those you're working with can often, although very well conducted, extremely well documented and, and perfect in that sense, can sometimes work against a campaign. Um, I mean, for example, you might have uh, a group from a northern country who does research on a dam that is very destructive, uh, is causing resettlement, causing people to be forcibly removed from their homes and so on. And they may frame that research in terms of costs and benefits. Now that might well be very helpful in the context of a campaign in the north, but it may actually not be very helpful in the context of uh, a community that refuses to put a value on um, a human being resettled, that refuses to put a value on the loss of a wetland or the loss of, uh, of their forest or the loss of their fishing rights and so on. And who, if that is the way, the only way that the research is presented, gets trapped into a particular framework of critiquing that dam. So I think one, you know, you, one's got to be very, very sensitive to and establish relationships with those one's working with to try and make certain that the research one does actually helps create political space for them rather than traps them. I mean, I don't know whether that's a, an example that makes sense, but... Um, Absolutely, to me it does. This, the, the tyranny of cost-benefit analysis yeah. and what you push off I mean, the it's agenda. A, I mean, it's just one example. Yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, there are other examples where, you know, one can do research that's very much directed um, to a particular institution in, institution in the north, World Bank, Export Credit Agency or whatever, and that may be very useful for those on the ground who, are, who want to put pressure on that institution. But if that research is then used to um, uh, try and redirect a local campaign towards Washington or towards London and takes away from community organising on the ground that may well be much more effective at a local level, then the research can be quite harmful. I mean, it, it, it may help the Northern Group but at the detriment of a southern campaign. So I think it's very, very important. And it's not just north south. I mean, you can, you can find the same examples with London-based campaigns um, framing their research for policy makers in London, as opposed to the practical, some other practical research that those on the ground in Manchester or whatever would find much, much more helpful for building a local campaign. So it's always, that tension's always there. I think it always has to be worked through. But, uh, so I think the answer to the question is, is research helpful? It can be and it can't be, you know. And it depends, <laughs> it depends how it's framed, how, who's, who's framing it. Um, what are some of the important things a new researcher should be aware of beyond the questions about well, what research am I doing? Who is it going to benefit? Who might it harm? What are some of the other things a researcher should think of? Well, I think research is something of an art form. I mean, you know, a lot of people get put off by research, thinking that it's very, you know, you've got to be very scientific, you've got to, it's, it's dry, it's... And I think it helps to actually approach it in a slightly more, maybe, artistic sort of way. I mean, what you're trying to do is paint a picture. You may be trying to paint, trying to paint a picture of a company, for example. 
and you're trying to, from my perspective, try and find the vulnerabilities, the pressure points. So it helps to have some sense, because you can go anywhere, in what, in trying to um, be a bit directed about, you know, is it, are you trying to find out about the company's tax policies, the, the tax behaviour? Are you trying to find out about its environmental record? Are you trying to find out about its record on human rights? Are you trying to find out about the association of its directors to other directors? You know, some sense of where, what it is, the specifics of what you, you want to start, where you want to start. There isn't a technique. You know, there really isn't a technique. Most, most of them, I, I find that most, most of the research I've done on companies, on private equity funds and so on, has required endless Googling. Not just Googling, I use quite a lot of different, a variety of different um, um, search engines because Google, Google doesn't always throw up the, the, um, uh, the best results. So I think it's, it's, you know, to approach it in a quite open-ended way but being quite directed about where you want to put your focus at any one point. The other thing that I think is just a lesson I've learned from you know, experience is it really is quite important to keep a log of your research. So when you go onto a website or when you make a search, write down what the search was. When you find a website that's useful, write down its URL. If it's a very use, if it's a newspaper clipping or whatever, or some company document, save it. PDF you can save by going to say print and then PDF that page because pages disappear, and although there are sites that can retrieve them, you know that's very time consuming. And if you keep a log, it does help in because. It, it, it's really quite quick before you start going back on the same old material and, and to see, you know, keep track roughly of where you are, what sort of searches were helpful, what weren't helpful. Excellent. Um, a very specific question. What is Companies House and uh, the quick version of, of how you use it? Blimey. Um, well, Companies House, every company in Britain has to be registered. And Companies House is the registry of all companies. In Privately owned and publicly owned. And Pri yeah, of, of, of companies. Yeah. Um, the privately owned ones will give less, less information than the, the ones that are, whose shares are listed on, on the stock, stock exchange. Uh, you can go on to Companies House, you type in the name of the company and you will get some very basic information about it. You get its name, its address and so on. You may find that there's lots of companies of the same name that may or may not be part of the same group. So sooner or later you will need to actually pay for some essential documents on the company. The most important of what, which I find are the shuttle, shuttle annual return, which tells you who the major shareholders are and tells you who the company's secretary is and the directors, and the annual accounts. And with those you can go quite a long way to finding names of subsidiaries and so on. Now, Companies House has everything electronic now. Most European countries are in the same position, EU countries. You can go onto their company registers. There are various sites that give list company registers worldwide. And even for some tax havens, you can get limited information on companies. Some, which may, I mean, it, it may just be important to know whether when a company says it's registered somewhere, is it actually registered there? I was working, um, uh, doing a research work. Yeah, that's fine. And can you just give a quick rundown of other databases that a beginner researcher or a researcher that's um, not terribly confident might be wanting to know I about find, as well? I find, I mean, I mean I, what I can do is um, give you a, a presentation which has got some of these sites on them, mm. um, on it. 
there are some very useful guides to, com to researching the company. C Corporate Watch has done one. Uh, there's one that Corner House did actually some, uh, some years ago, so most of the um, websites are out of date. But um, there are useful guides, and that's in the pre that, that's in the presentation. I there are some sites that I would go to almost immediately. I mean, after a Google search or whatever. One is Open Corporates, which lists companies in about I think 65 jurisdictions, so you can find quite quickly. Um, uh, whether or not a, a company is in those jurisdictions. It's not infallible. You know, because a lot of the, the jurisdictions don't, I mean, the, the databases aren't complete. Uh, there's another company called Duodil, which is very good for getting company information about UK companies. It's basically got the company house information, but it presents it in very easily understood format. Um, so you can get a lot from that without actually having to pay all the information on the company's house. Um, those are the two that I'd, I'd start with. Greg, um, final question. Um, advice on how to improve your skills other than keep doing it and reflecting. Is there anything Share else? Share with other people. I mean, you know, other people, are, you're not the only one who's trying to find out about these things. And I, I mean, I think that actually uh, this is a very important um, movement building exercise to actually share with others and create networks of researchers who are you know sharing tips um, uh, sharing the information they already have um, assisting you around blockages uh, because a lot of, I mean a, a lot of the way that movements building in, in this country particularly uh, a lot of it is now, and this is not a criticism of NGOs, but a lot of campaigning is now channeled, channeled through NGOs, which tend to be quite centralised. And the research tends to be quite centralised. And uh, a lot of it is done by um, uh, consultants. And, it doesn't and, and, and I think there's a tendency in that for the research to come out with conclusions that match the sort of campaigns that NGOs have tended to do in the past. And my experience is that actually when you get a you know, much broader base of researchers looking for little vulnerabilities, that this sort of um, uh, sows a thousand seeds, you know, which are more interesting often more interesting ways of campaigning on an issue come out of it. It may be some very, very minor local action, you know, that, that it may be that from that research you find that a company is doing a presentation somewhere or that it's um, doing, uh, coming to the university to do job, job um, recruitment or whatever. I mean, but little actions can come out of that that are then building their own dynamic and their own demands. And I, I mean, I see it as politically very important to try and demystify research and build it into part of the poetry of action, really. I, 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 I'm going to be at a workshop um, that being organised in, in, in Manchester by activists in Manchester on researching companies. Uh, the idea is to share skills and I very much hope to meet people who come along and, um, and learn from them and share whatever I can. That's fantastic. <laughs>